Hello, everybody. My name is Gabby Jones. I work for Encryption Consulting. Encryption Consulting covers all the aspects of security concerns, such as data security, key management, and privacy. Today, we're going to be discussing an interesting concept in data encryption technology, the code signing process, and its practices that are followed across the industry. First, we're going to delve into the understanding of code signing, its concepts, and then the basic architecture and components involved. Finally, we're going to go over the industry standards and the best practices that are followed in implementing the code signing process. So let's start um, going over code signing. In the recent past, many technology firms have been targeted by hackers that are trying to tamper and corrupt the source code. These attacks heavily impact brands' reputation, and it can lead to extreme losses for firms that are victimized by this. To tackle this scenario, code signing techniques can be used for safeguarding the code integrity and to provide authenticity of the author to the end user by providing digital signatures. So let's understand some setbacks and best practices that are gonna be followed um, through code signing. Code signing is the process of authenticating software code, application, programs, scripts, et cetera, to confirm the source of origin of the publisher using cryptographic keys and certificates. This certificate enables validation of code sign with an authentic root certificate. Performing code sign will cater below to the three functions. Provides authentication of code, provides cryptographic protection, and software and code author validation. Every organization is expected to benefit a lot through code signing, and this very reason makes this technology critical. However, there's a high risk of breach activity when private keys used for signing are not stored properly. So uh, to understand the best practices, um, we should go over basics of code signing. So again, code signing is the process of authenticating software code, application programs, scripts, et cetera, to confirm the source of origin of the publisher using digital certificates and keys. Certificate authorities, CAs, confirm code signing source identities and bind their public key to a code signing certificate. Code signing provides secure and trusted distribution of software, preventing tampering, corruption, and forgery. Code signing improves end user confidence in software and code integrity and sender authenticity. Core architecture of code signing processes consist of four important components. CSS or code signing system, CAs, certificate authority, TSA, timestamp authority, and verifier. Now let's look at how the architecture of this is structured. Code signing architecture provides a detailed explanation on how the code signing process works along with its components. Um, what I'm gonna talk about is the core architecture of code signing processes, which include the four components that I mentioned just a moment ago. The code signing system or CSS is the first and most important component of code signing architecture. Code signing system signs the submitted code using digital signature and authenticates the user. The digital signature is generated by CSS using private signing keys and certificates. It is highly important to secure the private signing key and certificate from misuse and unauthorized access. Certificate authority. Developers or sources issuing code should use certificates from authentic certificate authorities as the certificate enables the process of authenticating the source. Certificates issued by authentic certificate authorities must comply with standard certificate policies such as NIST Interagency Report 7924 while issuing certificates. Timestamp authority. An optional but important component in code signing architecture is timestamp authority. Timestamping preserves the source time when the code was signed and allows software to be accepted by the OS and other client device platforms even after the expiration of the certificate. Verifiers. 
end user using the code digitally signed by the publisher first initiates the process of verifying the signature. In general, verifiers are used to perform this step of validating the signatures and the timestamp if that is included. Code signing best practices. Every organization is expected to benefit a lot through code signing and this very reason makes the technology behind it critical. One has to keep in mind the best practices to be followed while implementing the code signing. Any slight negligence could lead to a great disaster of malware attacks, loss of reputation with clients and data breach and everything bad <laughs> that you don't want happening with your company. So um, to keep any kind of disaster from happening, we're gonna look at the best practices to follow while performing this process. One of them is separation of environments, test signing and release signing. One of the important code signing practices is to set up a parallel environment for code signing infrastructure to sign test code with an internal test root CA. Internal test root CAs would provide test certificates for signing the code. This benefits the firm in two ways. The first benefit is limiting the exposure of actual private keys and code signing mechanisms. And the other benefit is an opportunity to test the signed code for functionality bugs and vulnerabilities. The second that I'm gonna talk about, restricted access to private keys through physical security. Systems with private keys have to have minimal access. As the saying goes, the most secure computer would be the one with the least external connections. So minimizing the amount of people who have access to the system uh, would be beneficial so that code and keys can be kept as secret as possible. The third I'll speak about is cryptographic hardware protection modules or HSMs. Cryptographic hardware protection modules restrict the export of private keys from these devices. Cryptographic modules are tamper-proof and secure for storing keys that are used to sign digital certificates. Timestamp process, public or private. Timestamping process, helps in verifying the authenticity of the publisher after the expiration of the certificate. Public timestamping authority can be used for cost benefit, but is always suggested to use internal timestamp authority to avoid public network access. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about, scan the code for viruses. Code, code signing processes help in authenticating the code alone, but they can't secure that code. So it's always suggested to perform virus and malware scans before publishing the code and signing with digital certificates. Using virus or malware scans improve the quality of the code as well. If you're interested in learning more about encryption in detail, please subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, like this video and others if you want your algorithm to be more tuned into this type of specific material. Be sure to contact us at encryptionconsulting.com if you have any confusion, any questions, or if you just want more details about encryption or our company itself. Thank you.